In this lesson, we're going to continue to discuss strokes. If you'd like to follow along, go under the File menu to Open, and in the Sample Files folder, scroll down to 1305-1306, Stroke Secrets, and just click Open. Why don't we start by scrolling down to page number 2. I'm going to select the square with the dashed stroke. Why don't we zoom in a little bit with our zoom tool? By default, InDesign is making all of the corners exactly the same. Why don't we go into the stroke panel and see why that's happening? And it's because the corners by default are being adjusted. It's adjusting the dashes and gaps so all the corners meet exactly in the same way. Some other choices in the pop up menu are adjusting just the gaps, and you're going to see the gaps change slightly. Or I could adjust just the dashes, and you can see the dashes got longer. If I choose none, there is no adjustment. And so what it's doing is all of the dashes and gaps are exactly 12 points. And so none of the corners are the same. Why don't we go back to the default and adjust the dashes and the gaps, and you can see how much better that looks. Let me zoom out to fit my page. I'm going to hit Command or Control Zero, and I'm going to select this dotted stroke. Why don't we have some fun with this dotted stroke? I'm going to go into the Swatches panel, scroll down to the very bottom, and choose Dotted Gradient Fun. And you can see that it's a white to purple gradient that's being applied to the dots. Why don't we go into the Gradient panel, and make the angle of this gradient that is traveling along 180 degrees. So it's exactly the opposite of what it is now. I'm just going to hit enter or return. And now I'm going to go back into the stroke panel and I'm going to apply that same gradient to the gap color. So I'm going to go to the gap color pop up and choose my dotted gradient, fun. And there it is. So it looks like. The purple dots are fading into the gap color and then coming out the other side white. And that's because the two gradients are going in opposite directions. Kind of cool. Why don't we zoom in just a little bit on these two pictures. And you can see something unusual that's happening. Because there are gaps in these strokes, and the stroke by default is half inside of the frame and half outside. I have a picture peeking through the inside gap. Now, is there a way to fix that? Well, what I could do is select my picture and just fill in the gaps. So go to my gap color and why do I make it paper? And you can see now the picture is no longer peeking through the gaps because the gaps are being colored paper. Another way to fix this problem, let me select my other picture. If I align the stroke, to the outside. The entire stroke is to the outside of the graphic frame, so the picture is not peeking through it. Well, what if I wanted the picture to peek through both gaps? Then I would align to the inside. One of the nice things about the way strokes are applied in InDesign, if you apply a stroke to type, it is done in the typographically correct way. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to zoom out, Command or Control Zero, and click on this frame that has the word type in it. I'm just going to apply a stroke to the type itself. I'm going to go to my swatches panel, and instead of applying the stroke to the container that the type is in, I'm going to click the big T button, which means I'm now applying the stroke to the type itself. Let me go into my stroke panel and just increase the weight of the stroke. How about 10 points? You can see it is not affecting the letter form at all. Let me click the up arrow next to weight and you can see it continues to be outside of the type. So it's not messing up the letter forms. Why don't we create our own custom type of stroke? I'm just going to click on this line segment and I'm going to go under the options menu of the stroke panel to something called 
stroke styles. And you can see there are various stroke styles here that are rules. I'm just going to go to new. You can create your own custom dashed type of strokes or dotted type of stroke or striped type of stroke. All of these work pretty much the same way. So we're just going to concentrate on stripe. What this is, is the percentage of the weight of the stroke that each part of the stripe will take up. And you can see I'm getting a preview here. If I click on the little arrow at the bottom of my top stripe, I'm making that top stripe thinner. I'm seeing the exact percentage that that particular stripe is. So I'm going to make the bottom exactly the same, which should be 15%. In the middle of these two very thin stripes, I want to create a very thick stripe. So I'm going to click at about 25. I can always fix this later and go down to 75. I just need to adjust this one down just a little bit. And this one. There we go. So I have a very thin, very thick, very thin stroke. Let me increase the preview weight until we can actually see what's going on. So this is obviously something that's going to have to be used on a very, very thick stroke. Let me just go all the way up to how about 18 points. I'm going to name this. I'm going to call it very thin, very thick, very thin. Now I could just click add and create other totally custom strokes, or I could just click OK. And you can see it's been added to the styles, and I'm just going to click OK again. And why don't I apply that stroke to this particular line segment? To see it, why don't we move in a lot closer with our zoom tool? I'm going to make this thicker. I'm going to go back up to 20 points. Now, under the type of stroke pop up, I'm going to go all the way down the bottom and choose my very thin, very thick, very thin stroke. And you can see there it is. In the next lesson, we're going to continue discussing color.